Hey y'all, it's me, your girl Brianka J, and I want to thank you guys for coming back for another episode of Book Talk, Live for Books. I've changed some things. If you went around the website, went around my channel, you'll see that I changed to like Lit for Books. But it's all the same things. The only thing that I've really updated is the fact that now you're gonna get um, access to like my literary papers and tutorial services. And that's on my brand new website, www.litforbooks.com. You can still purchase the book there and you can also get merch and things like that. So go check it out in your free time. But right now, we're gonna discuss Black Buck. Um, I cannot say his last name, but it's by Mateo, okay? brought me to this work was actually I was in the store uh, in Barnes and Noble and I was looking for some things and I knew I was tired of reading books just uh, with that flashback to slavery times I was interested in reading about a male protagonist and even hearing from like a male author and I was looking for a little more of a modern day work which led me to Black Buck I was really attracted to the cover of course and then when I read um, just like what the book will be about, I was like, okay, this will be a good opportunity. So, quick synopsis of the work, and then I'll give you my guy, my review, of course. So we have an um, an unambitious 22 year old Darren lives in a best side brownstone with his mother, who wants nothing more than to see him live up to his potential as the valedictorian of Bronx science. But Darren is content working at Starbucks in the lobby of a midtown office building, hanging out with his girlfriend Soraya and eating his mother's home cooked meals. All that changes when a chance encounter with Rhett Daniels, the silver tongue CEO of Someone, NYC's hottest tech startup, results in an exclusive invitation for Darren to join an elite sales team on the 36th floor. He endures Hell Week as the only black person in the company and reimagines himself as Buck. A ruthless salesman unrecognizable to his friends and family. Okay, so the work. That's a synopsis. And you know what? When it comes down to plot, I'll say I haven't had this type of plot work in a long time. I really loved Mateo's attention to detail. He was very, like, action-oriented. So there was a lot of things going on. Sometimes they were really like sensational, nearly unbelievable, but it was it was fun. It, was, it never got to this dry point. It never got to this boring point. I never got to a point where I wanted to like skip pages. And you know, um, I think that's really good for a writer to have. So I really love the action orientedness of the book. And even some of the more sensational plot points were kind of very interesting. I also liked the theme of like workplace hostility, toxic workplaces, tokenism, like that feeling of being like the only black person and that cultural isolation that comes with that. And so I think that Mateo really hit on some really interesting issues of race and modern day times as far as how is it to be the, the cultural icon at your company and how do people perceive you, you know, things like that. So, I have my book club questions naturally. So it says, what was my favorite part of the book? My favorite part of the book, it's a good one. Okay, I'll tell you what made me feel the most. There is a point in the work where Darren loses a really close confidant, someone passes away, and we read a letter from the person, and oh my God, I was in tears reading that particular section. It's closer to the end of the work, but it actually brought me to tears, which really rarely happens when I read, because I just, I read so much, you know? So I was really excited to be that captivated by the issues going on that evoked the emotion and it actually made me cry. So I was like, okay, so that part with the letter and he speaks in a female protagonist voice, it was really good. My least favorite part of the work, um, 
I would say the the last chapter was just a bit mm, how he wraps everything up it makes sense it gives me a very good gangster movie type situation but it also just was a little sensationalized and it was disappointing to see who caused such betrayal to the main character Darren so I was a little disappointed by the last chapter of course endings are hard on readers so I'm not going to be too too harsh um, it says, did I race to, end, to the end or was it more of a slow burn? Okay, so I didn't race to the end of the work. I actually read maybe 200 pages almost two weeks ago. I was getting my hair braided, so I read it like 200 pages. And then I actually left the book at a friend's house on accident and then they returned it. And it sat on my, book stand, my nightstand for a few days. And it wasn't until I realized, like, hey, I am going crazy like I was just finding myself very stressed um, with career things and it just anxiety was overwhelming me and so I so to reset myself I read a book and I picked back black buck up again and I finished the rest of it in like a day so like yes but like no I didn't rush it it just you know how that be um says which scene which scene has stuck with you the most there is a scene in the early part of the work where Buck is joining the company and the people there are just so racist and they, they you know, wrap it into jokes and they make it seem like, oh, it's just good fun. It's just a hazing. But it was, it was a lot to the point that I actually wrote the author. And he wrote me back, so shout out to him, shout out to Mateo, he wrote me back. I wrote the author and I literally had to ask him like, was this inspired by, you know, my favorite book, was it inspired by Invisible Man? Because the things that he experiences while he's working at someone in the beginning is very reminiscent to what the narrator in Invisible Man experiences when he works at Liberty Paints. And it, it, Darren actually gets paint poured on him white paint is poured on the guy and i was like oh my god is he is he influenced he told me no i'll share the 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 conversation here um but yeah it was really good i haven't got to a point where i rave read anything or moved to like do so yet but the book was good um, i would definitely read another book by this author i think that his attention to like keeping the pacing was amazing he kept me with twists and turns and i think that was really really fun and i think he just overall has a really a lot of talent to stay in the race for a very long time it was nice to hear from hear from a male writer and it was nice to read from the perspective of male protagonist and so i really enjoyed it and i hope he makes more books um the book actually did impact my mood so the question was you know, the book impacted my mood. The thing is, I am currently transitioning from working full time at a corporation to working for myself and um, doing web design. And so it causes me to do things like cold calling, making sales, uh, putting myself out there. And these things are like really uncomfortable skills um, to like gather garner and like exercise because they're not in our nature right we feel comfortable when people come to us but that's just not how it works and so the great thing about this book it was like it kind of spoke to me and gave me some really good ideas about how to get myself out there and get the word out about my business and I thought yes I felt inspired I was like yeah, I can do this like reading black book made me feel like yes I can do this I can I can run my company, I can make these sales, I can make the money I need, I can have the freedom I desire. I don't have to be unhappy to make a living. I don't have to. And so I think the book really inspired that in me. What surprised me most about the book is that there's the ending is crazy, y'all. The ending I was like, wait, what? And so I don't even want to spoil it, but when you read it, hit me up when you read it send me an email or give me a comment or something don't ruin it for everybody but once you read it and you see how that ends and like what like how he switches it up on us hit me up because 
you're gonna be like what just happened I'm telling you I'm telling you I'm telling you I don't want to ruin the book but I'm telling you that ending is a shocker and I first read it was like ah it's not so eloquent like he's not like you know James Baldwin or anything but I was digging it but over time I actually really began to appreciate his writing style because where he lacks an elo eloquence, he um, recaptures and just this conversational style writing point where he's not trying to be, you know, lofty or literary, but he's getting his a point and message across effectively. And so I can appreciate effective communication and I actually came to enjoy it a lot. If I could ask the author anything, what would I ask him? I already asked him because, baby, the internet is real. And I don't mind writing your inbox. I don't care. <laughs> so I did ask the author a question. When I had a question, it was mostly about the inspirations of the work. And so he did answer me. Um, it says, how does the book's title work in relation to the book's contents? The book's title is ironic and interesting it's called black book and he's holding a coffee cup now the word book in itself has racial implications right it refers to a black man who needs to be broken right a bro you break in you know broke a book um and then in the book he's black so a black book is one imp one implication of the word right and he's worked for these white people who keep trying to break him down Another indication of the book is a black man trying to make a book in America, which is its own struggle, as we know. So there's another uh, indication of what the work is about. And then the book also talks about coffee and he works at Starbucks when he starts. So black coffee, Starbucks. So there are three, uh, is, it, is there a thing called a triple entendre? Whatever. Yeah, he was good with the title. I think he did a really good job. Um, as you read it, you, you come up with more and more ways the title just works. Um, I think I would re consider rereading it just for the sales tips. Guys, if you are starting your own business or you work in sales, then you know how hard it is to get a client, to close, just to kind of put yourself out there, to put your cars out can sometimes bring anxiety. People asking you what you do can make you a little bit nervous. And I think the biggest part, the biggest lesson that we learn here is that you got to learn how to sell yourself, put yourself out there and take what you want. And um, his sales tips alone is amazing. He starts with there's nothing like a black man on a mission. It's like the first thing he writes is his author notes. He says, um, selling something more precious than gold is a vision. He talks about how we have to sell the vision more than we sell the product. We sell the vision of it's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. It's no reason why you shouldn't get it. Um, he is good. He says, in the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity. Uh, he says, the quality of an answer is determined by the quality of the question. He told me to quote that and pay him royalties. I ain't got no money, sir, but you know, I will. I, will. I got you. He also tells us that people buy based on emotion and justify with reason. And opportunity was an opportunity. And if you took it and learned how to play their game, you could be successful. So that's really what the book is about, like learning how to play the game to win. Sales has always been something that people have been able to make money off of, especially our Caucasian fellow members of the world. They know how to make sales and they make a lot of money from sales. And he's pretty much saying people of color can get in sales and make a lot of money too. All they have to do is be ambitious and open to learning the techniques and once you learn them, you can sell anything, really can. And so if that's something that you want, if you want this freedom, if you want to be able to work for yourself, you got to learn sales. If you need to learn sales, you can read this book because it got all the information in there. And actually, to be honest with you guys, since I've read this book, I have been making a lot more cold calls and I have been more confident with putting my work out there and sharing what I know and getting more clients. So I highly recommend this work if that's 
something that you are interested in and I will catch you guys next time. Don't forget that if you liked this video, you should comment, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for my channel because I'm going to keep reviewing works like these. Also, if you're an English literary student or just have a real love for reading about books or learning about books, you should check out my website, www.litforbooks.com. has recently launched and I have literary analysis papers that I wrote in college. I also have my bookstore where both my books, both my children books are now for sale or will be for sale in August. And I have tutorial options as well as paper writing options if you may need them. I help students of all ages from early childhood to college. So if that sounds like something that you would be interested in, go to www.litforbooks.com and drop me a line. I am excited to hear from you and I'll see you next time.